Another episode of the Bobcat Club podcast. Today, we are joined by one of the former Texas State baseball player greats, six-time MLB All-Star, Paul Goldschmidt. Goldie, thanks for joining the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hey, of course. It's always great to catch up with former student athletes and uh, shifting to just current situation. I just caught you at the end of a workout, but how have you been preparing for this upcoming MLB season, even though spring training got cut short? Yeah, it's been weird. We were like a week away from starting the season and, um, you know, then all of a sudden we, we hear it's delayed and just, you know, this whole situation kind of escalated quickly and no one really knew what was going on. But um, I think, you know, within a week or so, we figured out it was going to be, you know, a little longer delay. And so for me, just took a step back and kind of went in um, more of like an off-season training. Like, I mean, we knew that you know, there's going to be this layoff. I think it's already been three weeks or so. And so knowing, you know, we're not going to have to be in game shape tomorrow. You know, there's some, you know, stuff that you could work on um, and then build back up. Cause I mean, hopefully we're going to be able to get back and play a ton of games and, you know, you don't want to wear yourself out here in April and uh, or March when this whole thing first started. So um, hopefully we'll get, you know, some type of uh, info about when the season could start and then you can, you know, start better preparing, but I think you're kind of in a little gray area, not a full off season, but also, you know, you don't want to be, you know, going so hard that, you know, you'll get worn down at the end of the season. So, you know, all the gyms are closed and all that stuff. So I just been, you know, ordered some weights and been working out in my driveway or in my garage and, you know, had to go buy a little net that I could hit some baseballs into and, and stuff like that. So it's, it's been a little different, but you know, it'll be, you know, a, a different challenge, but I think, you know, that's, that's what it's part of. We got to be adaptable and we got to be ready to go. And, um, you know, you're also understanding the bigger picture of things. There's just, you know, some, some chaos going on some people really struggling and, you know, we got to do our part to be ready to, to play baseball when it comes, but also understanding um, and keeping a, a broader picture of what's going on in the world around you. Going back to your Texas state days, Starting off on the baseball field, uh, you were one of the uh, best Bobcat offensive players of all time. We had Coach Trout on earlier, and he said you made coaching pretty easy. So uh, what, what was that like just playing with uh, now Coach Trout as the Texas State head coach? That was his first year with you, and then uh, Co- Coach Harrington as well. Yeah, I mean, man, I love my time at Texas State. Uh Coach Harrington was awesome, and uh, Coach Shaw was there at the end, and we got to know each other a little bit, so it's cool for it to kind of come full circle and now for him to be leading the program. Um, I just – I loved my my time there. Um, the friends I made, which were, you know, a lot of my teammates, um, still stay in touch with, you know, the coaches and a lot of those guys. Um, all I learned on the field um, – and Coach Harrington was such a great infield coach – and. Uh, Coach Bouchon was there for a year or two, and then Fikach and Trout and talking on the offensive side um, just was awesome. I, like I said, I learned so much and um, enjoyed enjoyed it, enjoyed competing out there and uh, just everything. The, the school was great. I mean, I, I don't have enough great things to say about my three years. I couldn't have, I wouldn't have changed it for the world. And I mean, the funny thing is, I didn't really know much about Texas State um, when I first showed up. I came on my visit. They said, you know, I got a call when I was in high school my senior year and said, hey, you know, we'd love for you to come check it out. I didn't know where San Marcos was. I didn't know anything about it. Um, And I came here and just fell in love with my visit, just uh, walking through the quad and and the river right there and just uh, something magical about it. And, you know, I hope the students that are are there and the players that are there feel the same way. And um, it's a great place to go to school and not a recruiting pitch. It's just the truth, man. It's a fun place to play baseball. And, um, you know, when I still get together with all those guys, we still reminisce about those times. Yeah, you'll hear a lot of Bobcats say nothing but good things about just the campus and the the athletics when you talk about the facilities with Texas State and the coaching staff. They're all top notch. But in the classroom, you were pretty good, Bobcat, uh, there too. Uh, 4.0 from the McCoy uh, College of Business. Could you touch on some of that stuff, how you were in uh, on track to maybe be heading towards Wall Street instead of the major leagues? Um, you know, I just, uh, you know, I didn't want my time at, at Texas State to be, you know, be a waste. I, I obviously, you know, baseball was a top priority, but, you know, I wanted to have a backup plan. I mean, 
it's been awesome what I've been able to do and make a career out of being a professional baseball player. But I think I also understood, you know, how the odds of doing that were so low. It was a long shot. And um, so I wanted to make sure that in my time at Texas State, I was preparing if, uh, if baseball didn't work out. And so tried to take, uh, you know, my studies really seriously and um, made sure to go to class and, and study and try to do well and, and prepare myself for um, an opportunity uh, outside of baseball. And, um, you know, I haven't had to really completely do that, you know, now, but, you know, I'm, I'm proud of, of what I was able to do. And, you know, love the classes. I was fortunate to enjoy finance and economics. And, you know, at the School of Business, a lot of those classes were interesting to me, still something, you know, I pay attention to and um, able to stay in touch with a few professors as well and just, uh, you know, enjoyed it and, and wanted to, uh, to use, you know, the scholarship that was provided for me and, and use it, you know, if I was going to need it. And on a personal note, you even met your wife, who was a uh, golfer here at Texas State uh, with the Bobcats. So uh, just a whole bunch of benefits coming from Texas State, huh? Yeah, another uh, – she was at the business school as well. And, you know, our first semester we met, we had a bunch of classes together. and uh, You know, she was friends with other guys on the baseball team, and we just started dating, you know, pretty soon thereafter. And who would have known that we were, you know, get married four or five years later and, you know, coming up on our – 10 year marriage anniversary in a few months. So, um, you know, Texas state has a special place in our heart and, um, you know, just thankful for my time there and, and meeting her and, you know, she still stays in touch with a lot of her friends too. We got a close you know, inner circle of people and it's really special to, to have those memories and friends and for, for, you know, me and my wife to kind of, um, mature together. I mean, that's what happens in college. You go and you, you think you know everything and you're 18 years old and then you go to college and, you know, it's so different. Your eyes are open and you're living on your own for the first time. Um, it's such a unique experience for, for everyone. And uh, it's, it's really cool to, uh, you know, have done that with my wife and my friends and just to look back on it with such fond memories. Kind of shifting gears back to college baseball, a little bit different now with the situation of the MLB. You guys are basically – just playing the waiting game, but fingers crossed y'all will be starting sooner rather than later. College just went ahead and canceled the season, but everybody did get to maintain their eligibility. So what were your thoughts on just how the spring sports were canceled here in the NCAA? Yeah, I just think back to what it would have been one of the years I was there and I, mean, I would have been devastated if that would have happened, but you understand the severity of what's going on. And, you know, this is, you know, something unlike anything else that's ever happened. And, so you understand, you know, what the schools and the NCAA was doing and um, you just hope, uh, you know, the players understand as well. But it's definitely heartbreaking. You're you're so dedicated. You're right in the middle of your season. You've sacrificed. You've done so many different things. You've worked together for, you know, this year to try to win, you know, whatever it is, a championship or um, other individual or team goals. So I, my heart definitely goes out to those guys. Um, but you know, this is just an unprecedented event and, and you understand what's going on. You hope the guys and their families will, and, and girls as well, will just, you know, stay safe and, uh, you know, use it as a time to learn, use it as a time to maybe uh, take a step back and, and come back, um, you know, hopefully once this passes and be ready to go for next year. Just going to put you on the spot with a fun question. Favorite coach and teammate over the course of your baseball career? It doesn't have to be Texas State, but uh, you maybe get bonus points from any Bobcats that are still mm -hmm. around here that'll be watching. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know if I have if I have one, man. I just had so many good memories, and um, I just enjoyed the times. It wasn't always on the field, but maybe the times after the games or before games and all the, the fun rituals you had or conversations and – you're just with, you know, your teammates and coaches so much, you know, more than your family. And those guys know you on such a personal level. They see you, you know, at your best moments with maybe a game winning hit. They see you at your lowest moments, you know, after, you know, losing the game or whatever it is. And it just builds this, this bond that is hard to describe. And so um, you miss those times. I know, um, you know, guys talk about when their careers are over. Those are the times they miss is just, you know, their teammates and their coaches and that, that inner family. And uh, I look back on it and just thankful for those guys that I had. And, you know, I don't think I could really pick out just one and um, just enjoy. And, and I still try to enjoy every moment of it, you know, how fortunate I am to get to keep playing right now.
what kind of love has Bobcat Nation showed you uh, maybe uh, from within the MLB stadiums and uh, all over the place wherever you go? Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a great alumni group, you know. Um, I mean, that's a big honor right there. And But, you know, whenever I'll – you know, we'll go play somewhere and there'll always be someone in a Bobcat hat or a sign that says, hey, I went to Texas State. And it's pretty cool. It's, you know, as big as the school is, it's kind of like a, a tight-knit community. And it's it's kind of uh, different in that, in that, you know, you feel like, you know, we're all one family. And um, so especially when we'd come back and play the Rangers or Astros or um, something like that, there'd be a ton of Bobcat fans and, uh, you know, just love my time there and uh, the support that they show me and definitely appreciative of it. Yeah, and we appreciate you joining us. Uh, Stay healthy, stay in shape, because uh, fingers crossed, baseball season will be back and going before we know it. Uh, Thanks for taking the time, Paul. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me.